Now, when you when you're liberating someone, I mean, the first step is obviously discovery. You got to figure out is there a demon in here, right? That's yeah. stage one. What what's right. you know if, w walk us through the the different hurdles or the processes or stages phases of liberation. Um, if you're talking about possession specifically, you mean mm -hmm. or possession. yeah. So there's actually there's actually six stages. The sixth stage is just liberation itself. The first stage is um, what we call the discovery phase. Uh, I go into great detail in the priest side. I don't have it in the lay people side, but I have it in great detail. So is the discovery phase, and usually that's it's you're starting to think, you know, maybe this person's problem is spiritual. Sometimes there will be a preternatural manifestation which someone will see, and we'll just like, okay, wait a minute, there's something here that we didn't see before. But you'll start people start to notice patterns of behavior that don't seem to really line out. They seem almost nefarious or evil. And so they're like the wondering, or the person themselves will say, there's something wrong with me. They may not necessarily want to know what it is. So they'll go to a priest for help, etc. So, and then usually in that discovery phase, you'll say a series of prayers that'll kind of drive the demon to the surface. And at a certain point, he'll actually show himself. The second phase, um, although usually once they preternaturally manifest in one of those three that we talked about earlier uh, in, in this podcast, <clears throat> um, then you've entered into stage three, which I'll mention here. In a but they also go, the second phase is what we call the obfuscation phase. That is where the demons are trying to confuse the person and, this, and the exorcist. Well, maybe she just needs more psychological help. Maybe she just needs another pill. Maybe she just needs to go see this other doctor. Maybe she, and maybe your problems are just psychological. You know, maybe if you just got this, things would be fine. You know, they're, so they're, they're obfuscating stuff and they're trying to hide. It's basically they're trying to hide because they don't want to be fully revealed. But once you realize, once they preternaturally manifest and you see them, they're like, okay, the gig's up, right? You know what they are. So then you enter into stage three, which is the battle phase. That's the one that constitutes the longest amount. That's the time in which the exorcist is going to have to be doing a lot of prayers in order to gain a certain amount of control and authority over the demon. There's usually a series of information that comes out, like how many possessors there are, what parts of the body they're possessing, what's going, what's, uh, how did you get in, things of that sort start to come out. At that stage, it's your... You might even find out what's the sign of departure. That is, means when they leave, what are we going to see, right? So um, you might get that. Sometimes you do. Sometimes you don't. You might get when they're going to leave. You might not. Usually when they tell you when they're going to leave, they're lying to you anyway. So you never ask that. Even though it's in the ritual, I read it, but I don't, I don't spend too much time on it. When you get towards the end of stage three, you're gaining so much control over the demon that he starts to lose control over the internal aspects of the possession, where he can't control things as much. The person, the person is starting to get psychological separation from the demon, and they're able to fight, combat this thing fairly effectively. When you start getting to age of stage three, you, you can. I've only had a few cases that actually go through stage four. Most skip from three to four. And stage four is what we call the external phase. This is the stuff that you saw in Emily Rose, where... You're doing the exorcisms, and he starts losing control, and so he starts literally moving stuff around in the buildings. Out, you know, you know all the stuff starts to start moving around. Books fall off, the lights blow out. Um, in one case, I had he would blow out the plumbing, and um, in fact, we actually had one case where he was a, it was Abaddon, who's a demon of a demon of destruction. Um, he would he every time we would have sessions. He would cause some type of major damage either to the building or something around the building. We, we literally. Um, one session, the train derailed a block away. Then the next session, right next was there was a, was a highway, inflammable mattresses in a, in a semi burst into flames, right, and shut down the thing for eight hours. Then the next time it blew out the plumbing. The next time it, it melted down the hard drive in the pastor's computer. You know, so this this is they they move externally when they start losing control over the internet, and it's all a distraction, and it's all trying to get you to. It's a bluff to think, oh, he's more powerful than he actually is, and that's actually a sign of weakness that he's got to do that, right? Um, it's also a sign of frustration on their part because they're losing control. That, like I've said, though, I've only had that in a handful, maybe seven cases where you see stuff that's that pronounced. You'll still get a little bit of it, but it's that pronounced. Then usually at the end of stage three, people go into stage five. So they, they, the demon starts losing control over the dynamics of it. Then he enters into stage five. And stage five is what we call the ascendancy phase. This is where people start to climb out. That They start to leave a more normal life. They can even get to the point where their life is completely normal, except for during sessions. Um, it also is it's a sign that the demon has basically lost. There's different parts of that stage five, but you could go up through that. And then you'll get right towards the end of stage five. Your goal is to get the last piece of information that's necessary in order to get him out. And it's usually right towards the end of stage five. He'll say, 
this is what has to be done, then you do it, and then stage six is the person's liberated. So that's the overarching process.